Hi, John. Um, I want to ask you about your answer to the question about um, your personal experience with privilege. You said you don't see color. Were you saying that you don't think you personally have any work to do? Oh, not at all. And I certainly mischaracterize the challenges that people of color face every day. I was reflecting on my childhood, which is how I interpreted the question, and I was inappropriate to say I don't see color. I don't have a clue as a white person the challenges that people of color face every day. But I did grow up in poverty. I did grow up with indigenous friends, South Asian friends, and for me it was normal to be poor and to be part of the crowd that nobody paid attention to. That was a mistake on my part. I have to work every day to improve on that, as do all leaders that aren't of color. Our next question tonight comes from Richard Zisman. Mr. Horgan, do you think it was effective when you continued to interrupt Andrew Wilkinson saying that's not true, that's not true in a number of uh, his answers? Well, uh, I, I think that the people at home need to know when uh, my record and the things that I've been focused on are mischaracterized. That's the essence of the debate. Having said that, I thought it was a very positive experience, I think, for, certainly for the three of us and for people at home, because there wasn't a lot of talking over each other. I think Shachi Curl did a really good job of moderating. I think it was a good night for British Columbia. Our next question tonight is from Ian Bailey, Globe and Mail. Uh, Mr. Horgan, was there any reason? Was there any reason you didn't raise the issue of Ms. Uh, Thornthwaite's re remarks about Bowen Wah in uh, the debate? Well, I, it was raised uh, by the moderator. Uh, and I felt that was sufficient. There's a range of issues that British Columbians are facing right now. Uh, the challenge is to uh, make sure that people see the choices available to them and, and ask that question of where they want to go and who they want to lead them. Uh, Mr. Wilkinson uh, took a few days to get an answer out. He was given an opportunity by the moderator. I felt that was sufficient. I, I wanted to make sure that uh, I talked about the things uh, that were not being discussed uh, by the moderator, and that's why I asked the questions that I did. Next question is from Glenn Korstrom of Business in Vancouver. I, I didn't hear much on the economic recovery benefit tonight. I was just wondering why that was and if you can concisely say why you think it's preferable to the Liberals as PST tax cut. Well, we do have a PST reduction in our plan uh, for machinery and equipment for businesses that are expanding or hiring new people. I believe that's a targeted tax cut that will benefit those businesses and benefit the economy. The, the uh, COVID benefit is for families that are struggling to make sure that they'll turn that money back into the economy. People on middle and low incomes will not be going to tax havens with the $1,000. They're going to be going out to stores and other shops in their community to support small businesses. I believe that's much more stimulus than giving a blanket tax cut or tax break uh, that the Liberals are proposing. If you want to buy a yacht, I'd vote for the Liberals. If you want to buy groceries which don't have PST, you want to buy rent that doesn't have PST, you want to care for your child that doesn't have PST, that's not helping anyone. Putting money in people's pocket that will recirculate in the economy, I think that's good politics, it's good economics, and it's what we need right now when people are struggling. Our next question is from Eva Jun from Radio Canada. Hi, uh, Mr. Horgan. Um, leader, first of all, uh, asked you many questions, um, criticized you for calling a snap election. How do you see things moving forward if you're required to work with the Greens um, in the next uh, government? Uh, my, my approach is to work with anyone who wants to work with me. Uh, the BC Green Caucus and the NDP Caucus worked very well together on many, many issues. We had disagreements. There are issues that I wanted to bring forward that we weren't able to. And I'm uh, absolutely prepared to work with Sonia and her team in the future. Thank you, everyone. That's all the questions we have today. Thanks, everyone. Uh, hi, Sonia. Uh, I, I'm just wondering, when you, you heard the responses from the other leaders on the the privilege question, you made a point of speaking about your personal experience, but what was your reaction to what the other two leaders had to say, and what message do you think it sends to other people who are looking for diversity in this group of leaders debating today? Yeah, thank you, Binder, for the question. And, um, you know, I, I think it's for them to reflect on their answers and to reflect on, on, on their privilege and as I am trying very much to do, recognizing how important it is that um, we see and experience the world differently as white people than people of color and black people and indigenous people 
in this province and in this country. Um, I, I think that it's, it's incumbent on all of us to really reflect on how we can make change so that we have less systemic racism. We have to become anti-racist in everything we do. And I think a really important path forward for that is to ensure that there is anti-racism curriculum in our K-12 to classrooms uh, so that we are raising a generation of, of young people and our future leaders who can understand the difference uh, that it, it is to be a white person in society. Next up, we have Richard Zussman, Global News. Uh, Ms. Hurston, no, I think a lot of people are commenting about how you were able to be vulnerable and also be the most effective in communicating your vision for the province tonight. How do you feel coming out of that debate? Do you think you accomplished what you needed to, and do you think this is the boost you need uh, to potentially pick up some seats here? You know, Richard, I'm, I'm, I'm really focused on what we need to be doing for the people of this province right now, as well as recognizing that every decision we make right now has to be leading towards a future that we can be proud of being part of right now, that we have to start delivering uh, on both fronts so urgently. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to introduce myself to a lot of British Columbians. It's uh, exactly four weeks and one day since I became leader of the BC Green Party, uh, and it's been pretty much the busiest four weeks of my life. Uh, but I'm very committed to what we are putting forward as a vision for this province, recognizing that we have to help people in this moment we're in that is unlike any moment that we've ever been in as a province, and at the same time recognize the responsibility that we have to make decisions that will make the future more sustainable, healthier, and better for our children and grandchildren. Next up, Eva Uguin from CBC. Hi, Ms. Hirsten. You're talking a lot about the future that uh, British Columbians need, and we're in the middle of a, a pandemic right now. What did you think of the other two leaders' um, plans for how to deal with the pandemic moving forward? You know, I, I think that both of the other leaders and the other parties have good ideas uh, for addressing the issue, the, the, the challenges that we and people are facing right now in BC. I think that we also have a, a, a lot of good ideas that focus on helping renters right now who are paying too much of their rent, uh, too much of their income in rent, helping get mental health supports for people so that it's affordability isn't a barrier ensuring that we are, uh, our long-term care homes are delivering the care hours that they need to to our seniors. Um, and I, I think that what would serve us best in this province and in this time is to have all of our political leaders recognize that we have to act urgently together on these crises that we're facing. Uh, we, we have to stop uh, letting partisanship erode our ability to solve the problems that people need us to solve right now at the same time as recognizing that we, we have to be serious about understanding what the evidence tells us about the future that we need to build, that climate change is very significant and very real and it is an emergency, that our biodiversity loss is impacting our health and our well-being, and that we have to have a, a generation of students who are educated in this province who aren't living in a in a sense of scarcity in their public education, schools and classrooms. There's a lot of work we need to be doing right now very urgently. And I think the most important thing is that elected representatives start to recognize that we can listen to each other, hear the good ideas, and then work quickly and with urgency to put the solutions forward. Just as a reminder to press star one to queue for questions, our next question is from Tim Ford, Victoria Buzz. Good evening, Sonia. Uh, I'm so glad you were just talking about people listening to each other. It segues nicely into my question. Um, we observed in the United States a uh, debate between Kamala Harris and uh, Mike Pence where, uh, to be blunt, one person was not really listening to the other. Um, and I think that gender played a lot into that. How do you feel tonight's debate went for you with regards to being listened to? Do you feel that your message was being heard? 
I think overall, um, as Shachi Curl indicated at the end, it was a, a, an overall a civil debate. People did listen to each other. There wasn't a lot of talking over each other. It's really important that we engage in political discourse in a respectful way. We're seeing the opposite of that, opposite of that in so many countries right now, and even here in Canada. And it doesn't serve anybody for us to be disrespectful with each other. It doesn't serve anybody for us to constantly be trying to tear each other down. We really do need to find a way to get into that legislature and recognize that we have to be in service, we have to be focused on the people that we represent, and we have to be making decisions, decisions uh, with an urgency and setting aside partisanship as much as we can as we move forward and serve the people of BC. Next is Glenn Korstrom, Business in Vancouver. Hi, Sonia. Yeah, just one some clarity on, on economic stimulus for individuals. I know you, you have a, um, a small business plan or a substantial policy there, but uh, and I don't think you support the Liberals with PST cut or the NDP's economic recovery benefit, or do you, or what is the Greens' alternative? So we will be releasing our complete platform tomorrow. I'm very excited about it. But what's important is that we recognize that you want to invest all funds right now, especially in a time like this when we're in an, uh, uh, an economic uh, challenging place as a province uh, and around the world. Uh, we're seeing that governments everywhere are going to have to go into deficit spending to ensure that we get the services to people that they need right now, but also build uh, a, a rebounding and a healthy economy on the other side of this. And so all of the investments we make right now, we want to be ensuring that, that we can identify the outcomes we want to get from them. And so the problem with a, a, just a broad tax cut or just a one-time cash payment is you can't really identify what outcomes you want to get from that. But if you invest those in plans and programs like the $1 billion innovation fund for small businesses or the grants to tourism operators that will allow those families and their employees to make it through this winter or investing in early childhood education because we know that that is an investment that has enormous economic dividends for all of society, then we can measure are these investments getting us the outcomes that we want. For too long we make these kinds of investments and, and spend money or do tax cuts but we don't really understand why or where we're trying to get to. We have to be outcome focused and the platform that we're releasing tomorrow is an outcome focused platform that looks at all aspects of British Columbia society and identifies where we want to get to as well as how we address the very urgent and pressing needs that people are feeling right now. Thank you everyone, that was our last question. Thank you. Well, it was quite a debate. I thought it was constructive and thoughtful. Uh, the interruptions were kept to a minimum, and it was a process of us getting our story out to the general public in the most effective way. What we have to do, of course, is portray our view of what British Columbia's pathway needs to be, and I thought the opportunity was there to do that. I thought it was a very constructive relationship with Ms. First now from the Green Party, very thoughtful questions and uh, thoughtful answers on all sides. And Mr. Horgan and I have to have uh, some disagreements and I think that was done in a respectful and orderly way and so I hope it was useful to voters. Okay, great. We will go ahead to questions. Just a reminder to press star one to get in a queue. We'll go to Richard Sussman. Go ahead, Richard. Do you think there's a moment there, Mr. Wilkinson, that stood out for you where you will, were able to deliver what many will describe as a knockout punch to convince voters that you can better serve British Columbians than John Horgan can? Well, I'm rather humble about those things and not wanting to claim credit for a victory. That's up to the people of British Columbia to decide. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of talk about that in the next few days. But I think we did get across our core messages about the need for an economic plan for British Columbia, including cutting uh, sales tax, including $10 a day daycare for everyone who needs it, including reforming ICBC, including infrastructure spending. Those are the things we need to get across and communicate to people. And I think that came across well this evening. Great, thanks. We'll go to the next question. Eva Yugen from Radio Canada. Go ahead. Hi, Mr. Wilkinson. Um, there's 
chatter on social media now that your response in, in terms of relating to renters uh, came off as a bit tone deaf and, and didn't connect with what renters experience is now in spite of what your own experience was. What's your response to that? Well, I have trouble seeing the world through their eyes now because I haven't been a renter for some time. So you have to be very respectful and listen. What we do know is that rents in Metro Vancouver are up by about $2,000 per year for the average renter since the NDP took office. That's an alarm bell to me because it means there's not enough supply of rental housing. We've got to get more supply of rental housing out there so renters have a genuine choice. It's not easy. And the idea that you'd be stuck in a rental place with rising rents is very challenging. And so we've got to make sure there's enough choice for renters by expanding the supply of dedicated rental buildings that won't be converted into condominiums. Sounds good. And our last question of the night will go to Tim Ford from Victoria Buzz. Go ahead, Tim. Good evening, Andrew. Thanks for sticking around. Um, I just wanted to ask about a question uh, that was brought up by the moderator as a point where you didn't give a direct answer, uh, specifically regarding protesters around pipelines. I wanted to uh, ask if you uh, wanted to clarify your position on that. How exactly would you prevent protesters from accessing these areas? Well, the pipeline proponents, apart from Trans uh, Mountain, which is a federally owned project, are private companies. And if they have concerns, as they did on the coastal gas link facility in the north, their task is to go to the courts and ask the courts for an orderly process to resolve the protests. Let's be clear, though, the right to protest in a peaceful and orderly fashion is a constitutionally protected one. But there is no constitutionally protected right to be obstructive or destructive, and that's where the courts come in, and everybody has to follow the rulings of the courts, obviously. Great, and thanks everyone for sticking around. That's all the time we have. Have a great night. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.